Hi guys, welcome to Learning Electronics Repair. And today, we're not going to talk about repairing things, we're going to talk about kind of the opposite. So, I do get given quite a lot of scrap stuff, or I find it down by the skip where people are dumping things. Usually they put things like this to one side in case anybody wants it. So I find everything from CRT TVs, old video recorders, things that are broken, printers sometimes. And other times I just get given stuff like mixers and whatever, for example, that are not repairable or they're just not complete. So one of my other pastimes, because it does pass time, is I do tend to salvage components from these things and then throw away what I don't need. Now, I don't do this all the time. And what gradually happens is my workshop gets filled with junk and every now and then i'll set a day aside to just clearing stuff out salvaging what i want and then i end up with a lot more space to fill with more junk of course <laughs> what else would you do with this space so right now i've got a lot of scrap circuit boards and items lying around so i'm going to spend some time taking what i want and while i'm doing this i'll explain what I think are the components you should be salvaging from scrap electronics and what you shouldn't. Of course, there's no absolute answer to this because this will depend to a large extent on what you are doing. So whether you are a repair tech or you're learning to repair or you're just learning electronics or you are maybe an experienced hobbyist building lots of things, then depending on where you fall, in that spectrum, you will have different requirements of what you want to salvage. But I'll show you what I think is worth taking. I think, generally speaking, this is probably true for most. Before I start, I will say there are certain things that I do not salvage components from. And these are items that I'm likely to see again. So, particularly graphics cards, I tend to leave all the components on and keep the graphics cards if they scrap because it's easier to find the part you want if you're trying to repair another one, especially small SMG components that are not marked. Yeah, you can just find one in the same place on another scrap item and just swap it over. I'm sure the same applies if you are repairing game consoles or if you are particularly repairing certain models of motherboard, for example. So in those cases, I would tend not to salvage the parts. I just keep them. I have quite a lot of scrap items like that around things like this came from an old yamaha mixer it wasn't complete when i got it it just had the mixer board it didn't have the amplifiers it didn't have the power supply so with these type of items i will salvage parts from them when it comes to salvaging components i don't use any specialist equipment although i have and you will see on my channel a vacuum desoldering gun and other equipment like that solder braid i tend to do all the salvaging with a soldering iron this is my t12 which has the bc3 tip on a very large chunky tip what you want for this is a powerful soldering iron with a large tip and i'll show you the way i do this and you'll understand why so i use this i use fresh leaded solder and i use hot air so i have my 861dw hot air desoldering station and that's basically all i use there may be some rare occasions where i specifically want to use the desoldering gun because i find a component i think is particularly useful or valuable and it's the only way or the most likely way to desolder it without damaging it with something like this, I will probably take a lot of the potentiometers off here, but there are many, many of them. So if I end up with most of them and some get broken in the meantime, it isn't really a problem. I often tend to go for speed. So I try to salvage what I want quickly and move on to the next thing. So something like this mixer board, what would I have? Well, I'll certainly take potentiometers, and these are actually, I think, rotary encoders. They're clicking. Okay, so I'll take those. I may or may not try to desolder switches. I mean, these are three positions, so I might. But if they want to come off easily, fine. If they don't, I'm not going to spend time trying to do that. 
This is quite nice, useful thing for projects, so I'll try to get that off. And again, these sliders, I mean, these are really quite corroded, so whether or not I bother will depend on how easy it is to do. Yeah. The same applies to these push button switches, they're usually very difficult to desolder in one piece. But I may well keep some of the actual little knobs off them, yeah, they're probably worth keeping some. And that's because I'm likely to find these will fit on other pieces of equipment I may want to repair that has some of these missing. Of course, this one doesn't want to come off. So that's what I would take from here. Again, the LEDs, if they come off easily, and there's lots of them, I may. Always worth having some LEDs. These little connectors I won't bother with because they tend to fall apart, so the pins come out, you can't easily desolder them anyway. The same with all these small capacitors. I have a lot of them. If you want them, fine, but I have so many I really don't need to. And on the reverse of here are some ICs. Now let's have a quick look to see what these are because this will determine whether or not I want them. These are probably dual op amps. Let me see if I can read the markings on one. So Sharpie is usually the best way. And then as that dries out, often we can actually read the markings. Let's see. A bit of ISO maybe. Yeah, and now we can read them, okay, so 2068D, I'm sure these are a dual op amp, I can make a quick check, but I'm almost 99% sure that's what they are, yes, that's exactly what they are, so ICs that come into this type, I consider these to be A, generic, and B, useful from a repair point of view, so these I will desolder as well. They may also be quite difficult to get now, new original ones, if these are basically obsolete components. So those sorts of ICs I would definitely desolder. And these ones which are behind where those LED bar graphs are, are almost certainly the drivers for the LEDs. With this sort of thing, LED driver, yeah, probably the sort of thing I'd like to have especially if there's a data sheet available and there is okay so again something like that i will try and desolder it if it comes off easily i'm not going to bust the gut over it if it doesn't i don't have a specific use for these chips but that's the sort of part that you could use certainly in hobbyist applications and worth having if you are working in a repair situation. Okay, so let's see what we can get off this board easily. First, I'll go with these op amps then. There's quite a lot of them on this board, so we can see there's some further along here as well, and more to the other side. So I'm gonna try and remove as many of these that will come off easily. For this, I'm gonna use hot air. Because this board is kind of like lifted up by all of these components, I'm just gonna place it on the bench, Otherwise, if the PCB was sitting flat, I'd put it onto a metal lid like this one. I took this off a scrap satellite receiver probably 10 years ago, and I'm still using it. Now let's get some chips. <laughs> the problem with these off amps is quite often these are actually glued to the PCB. Sometimes they kind of like jump off the board as the glue expands or something similar happens. And once you get one unsoldering, probably the whole lot will come off very quickly. I'm actually going to go left-handed with the hot air, right-handed. With the tweezers. Okay. You see, that doesn't want to come off easily. Now it's off. 
So, once I've got the first one, the rest will probably come quite quickly because this area of the board is wall. And I just literally just work my way across. Okay, so a few minutes later, I've removed all of those op amps. Now with the salvage components, they will eventually get sorted and put into my storage. If you don't know where things are, there's no point in having them. So I have sets of drawers, these sort of things. So this is 7400 series, and I have several more in that series. This is all chips that begin with LM, that sort of thing. So that's how I actually organize them. Not one type per drawer because A, you need a lot of drawers and B, it's very difficult to keep them in numerical and alphabetical order if you do that because you're continually adding more. So that's how I organize them, but I don't do that straight away. Today, I'm just gonna salvage what I can and make some space. But what I will do when I've got a heap of components like this, all from the same board that are all the same, I'll put them into an anti-static bag. Then it just makes it easier to sort them later. Don't bother at this point to make a note on the bag what they are. You could do, of course. I haven't actually checked at the moment to see if they are all the same, which I would do later. But I'm confident enough these probably are. And then I'll put that bag into my plastic tub. Nice new tub, which I'm going to salvage into today. And then it just saves me later rummaging through hundreds of components and finding more of the same type all together. So when I come to put them into my stock, it just makes it easier for me. So that's how I tend to do that. These small SO23 transistors or possibly other devices in that package, I tend not to bother because they can be quite hard to identify. Yes, sometimes when I'm repairing stuff, I have to identify these. This is just a personal thing if you want to or not. Personally, I won't bother to unsolder these unless I have some specific reason which compels me to do so. But what I do want as these two. So with these, I'm going to unsolder them with hot air, but just because I want these chips particularly, I'm going to add some leaded solder first. It just makes it a bit easier to desolder them without quite so much heat. So with these ones, a bit of leaded solder, and I'll just effectively just bridge all the pins together, at least get a leaded solder on them. I actually really want to just get the things to bridge together if I can. Then they'll come off easily, okay. Not wanting to bridge easily those ones, never mind. Go through the other side. At least you have some leaded solder on there, it'll make it a little bit easier to desolder. That went a bit more like it. A bit of flux, it probably would do even more so. Okay, so we got some leaded solder on there. That should make this cloth a little bit easier. A little bit kinder to the component, maybe. So I'm going to warm around the chip first, try to get this board nice and warm. And then I'm going to blast the thing with hot air, drag that from the top afterwards. I have the hot air on 450, which is quite hot. Full airflow. You see that lifting? I'm not worried about damaging the PCB, there was glue under there, you can see it. I 
Again, that's lifting. I didn't have a grip of it. <laughs> now it's off. Okay, they came off nice and clean, as you can see. And again, I'll just drop them in the bag for now. In my tub of stuff. So, what else do we have? Well, these brown capacitors, I have so many capacitors, I won't bother, but they would be very easy to remove if you really wanted them. You're probably better taking the potentiometers off first, it makes it easier. LEDs, yeah, if we can get them off easily, we'll have them. Let's have a look. And another nice thing with these LEDs, I have like these little standoff things, they can be useful. Something else I would definitely take, you may not think about it, is this bolt here. Yeah, this sort of hardware is useful. Definitely worth having. If they nuts and bolts, put them back together, guys. Saves you a lot of time in the future. Okay. Let's see how easy these LEDs are. So we'll start with a few up here. The way I would do this is grab hold of the LED. And then just warm both legs at the same time. This is why we have the chunky soldering iron tip. Can I just see where it is? Well, I think it's actually there where those two white marks are. It'll probably be listed here somewhere. Let's have a look. So I've got a hold of the thing with my fingers. Yeah, you see, I've just tilted it one way. It came out the other way. So that was out very easily. These are handy, so I'll try and take all these off the board. So I now have a nice handful of LEDs. One of the main factors on whether I would actually bother salvaging these is actually the length of the legs. If these had been flush with the board, I wouldn't have bothered with them, to be quite honest. They're cheap enough to buy anyway, but ones like these with the standoffs, the standoff is as useful, really, as the LED to me. So I can just check one or two of these. Now, normally speaking, I wouldn't bother to test these at the moment. I'll put them into my stock. If I then decide so later that I want to use any of them, I will test them. I'm just using my LED tester here. Yeah, red. What color are these ones, these clear ones? Let's have a look. I'm interested. It doesn't read that way. Oh, they're yellow. Okay, so we got red, yellow, green. So I'll just keep hold of those. If I want to use any, I'll test them. Some salvage components you've noticed I put into anti-static bags. Some I just put into these polythene bags. This depends on the type of component, basically, and how susceptible they are to ESD. Certainly MOSFETs and I see as I put them in anti-static bags normally. Bipolar transistors, I'm either or, you know. I'm not fussed either way. Depends what I grab first in the way of a bag, basically. But once again, those are going to be fairly easy to sort out once I put all this into the various drawers I keep my components in. So what else are we going to salvage from this one? Well, these brown capacitors, I won't bother. I've got a lot of these sort of capacitors. You could desolder them very easily if you wanted them, of course. Just get hold of the capacitor. I have one here. Okay. It helps to use a little bit of fresh leaded solder. Get hold of it and just literally take it at the board. See, I'm just pulling one side, then the other side. Yes, yeah, there. So you can salvage them easily if you want. If you don't have many, yeah, sure, they're useful, but I have a lot of these. So I'm not going to bother to take the ones off this board. What is this? Let's have a look. 392J, F6. F6 is almost certainly a voltage code. 392 is the value in picker farads. 39 followed by two zeros, so 3,900 picker farads or 3.9 nanofarads. J is the tolerance, 5%. So, yeah, if you want them, they're easy to get. These slider potentiometers, although I would normally salvage them, I just feel they're too corroded to bother with. So I'm going to have a go at some of these rotary ones. Again, this will kind of depend on how easy these are to unsolder. 
I'll take one off and just clean it up a little bit to see what condition it's in. If I'm happy, I'll get some of the others, if not all of them off. So let's have a go. The way I find these the easiest, and bear in mind, guys, there's always lots of different ways of doing this. Whatever works for you, I would say really is the easiest, but the way I find, and I'm guessing you're interested, otherwise why be watching my video, is add some leaded solder on the two tabs that actually hold this to the PCB. I'm not gonna bother with those ones yet. Now what I'm gonna to try to do is to bend this away from the board. So heat these two, one then the other, yeah, like that. It's actually come out of the board. There, it's loose, yeah. I'm not gonna push it too far forwards. It's loose, okay? Now we have the six pins. Again, a little bit of leaded solder. Now, if I go quickly across here, yeah. It's hitting the desk, that's why it didn't just come out, just raise the board a little bit. There. So that is our component cleanly desoldered. Okay. Yeah, we bent them forwards a little bit during the process, but that's not a problem. Let me just see how clean this will come up. A bit of isopropyl, a little brush, just have a quick look. Yeah, looking pretty, pretty good that one. Not tarnished or anything. Okay, so I think that's clean enough to use. What is it? Okay, so B says this is linear. It's a linear potentiometer. The value varies evenly. This has a center click position, which is a bit nice to have. So I definitely will take some of these. 503 is the value, so five zero and three more zeros, or 50K, 50,000. Okay, and this will be a dual potentiometer, so the fact we've actually got six pins on here, we actually have two potentiometers in here, stereo, okay? I think the D probably stands for dual, actually. Just guessing, but sounds reasonable. Okay, so... I'll show you again on one more and then I'll just remove the rest of them myself. In fact, let's do this one. This is one of the, it's either a rotary encoder or it has quick stops all the way around. You can probably hear it. Uh, so we'll try and desolder this using the same technique. And then there's one there, looks slightly different. So we'll have a go at that one as well. It's got two rows. This might be a switch actually. Well, let's do this. Okay, so same sort of thing. So a bit of fresh solder helps. Just get a bit of heat into it. Same with the other side. This is why we want the nice big chunky tip. It's much easier to get hit into the component there. Let's just see if we can move it. Okay. Back to this side a little bit. I guess you could use two soldering irons if you have three hands because you need to move the component. But you can see... That's coming out just fine. And then the same thing we did before across these pins. This has five pins on. It's not like a dual potentiometer. I do think it's some sort of rotary encoder. Okay, so now we're gonna slide up and down on here. Yeah, and just pull it out of the board. There you go. So that's another one done. And while we're at it, we mentioned this is one of the switches. See if these will come off. This may be more tricky. I don't think these are actually part of the switch. I think, yeah, these are part of these potentiometers. Let's have a go. So, yeah, one, those three, I've tilted the switch slightly. These three, I've tilted it back slightly. Yeah, it's out. So actually those switches are coming out quite nicely. If they come out that easily, I'll probably unsolder them, at least a handful of them. This is the rotary encoder. Yeah, it continually rotates, so I think it is, but in actual fact, it seems to have a wiper in there, you see it. Yeah. Feels like a rotary encoder.
Okay. But you can see he's been soldered nicely. These pins bent slightly again just due to the method we used, but soon straighten those up. Okay, so I'm going to just unsolder a lot of these potentiometers now. Okay, so I have a handful of switches here and potentiometers. I can actually remove some more from this board. Well, let's have a look at a few of the other interesting components as well. Here's something that looks like an op amp to me. Yeah, another JBC one. Let's see if we can get this off. So you can see this has eight pins. Easiest way to desolder these is to get something underneath it, if we can. Okay, you can see that's actually gone all the way under it. This is the dual header socket thing that was next to it. I can see eight pins here. This is the device. So again, we'll add some leaded solder to all of the pins. Not worried about if I bridge them together or not. Okay, there we go. And now I can just put a bit of pressure on this and slide the soldering iron up and down along here. So I'm going to try and melt all these pins at the same time if I can. Now this looks like it's not gonna work easily, okay? It's too many pins. So in this case, I'll take the hot air. I still have a bit of pressure on this thing. And I'm just going to see if I can actually melt all the solder now. Okay. warmed it up it must be close to melting let's just get a soldering iron again and just finish that off there and there's our chip okay so we have that one unsoldered how about this thing this is more tricky so there's two ways of going about this really one is to add leaded solder like I am doing and then we can get the desoldering vacuum tool just on solder this but I think from the way these are moving I've got a feeling these LEDs are actually all individual sort of like into a plastic thing and maybe yep can you see that that and that I think what we can probably do here is we move the actual plastic thing is remove this and actually then take the LEDs out separately. We can give it a try. No. No, not that way, okay. Now we can try the soldering braid. A little bit of flux will probably help this. If not, we can use a vacuum desoldering tool. Okay, I want to get a lot of flux out. Sometimes I find it's easier just to do it this way. Okay. Let's have a go. I've done this side using braid. I think they probably all clear. There might be the odd one that's stuck. No, they're all okay. So that side's done with braid. Uh, I think some have actually pulled back through a little bit even here. Not quite sure what happened there. Or maybe these legs were just literally longer. I didn't really notice. 
And then the other side I'm going to try using the desoldering vacuum tool. To do this I'm going to remove a lot of this flux because it tends to clog up the vacuum tool in my experience. So we'll just clear a lot of that off. Okay. Let's try it. Yeah, this should do the job as well. Okay, so that's that side done. I think the vacuum tool was slightly cleaner than the braid, slightly better at getting the solder out. Now will this thing actually come off the board? Get something flat underneath it. Oh, it's coming. It's being held in place by these little plastic clips. That one's gone. Try and push on the other one. Not easy, but we'll try and do it this way. Okay. A bit further down. Yeah, it's coming off all right. It's off. Okay, so yeah, that's come off really nice and clean yeah looks good this bit of damage was already done anyway so yeah just get the old flux off that but that should be nice something useful to put into your little stash of components for hobby projects yeah just out of interest although we don't want the pcb that came out nice and clean uh, so actually that was a quite a good job. So we've got what we want from that PCB. Let's have a look at something else. Here's an old remote control. Very little worth having from here. I'll probably have the infrared LED because the legs are a reasonable length again and it's easy to get. Again, I'll just try to hit both pins at once if I can. And there we go. With these, I tend to put them in a bag and just mark them as an I or LED. Otherwise, later you may come to think it's just faulty. So, while we're at it, I or LED. You may or may not find these battery terminal things handy. But what you probably will find handy is keep one or two of these because what you can do with these as these are like all black bits this is what's making the contact yeah and you can actually slice these off with a sharp knife okay well that one actually messed it up but if you get a few of these well just keep one of these if you have a remote that's faulty you can actually sometimes take these things off here and then glue them onto another remote let's have a go to another one here we are yeah that's one much better so you see it there that's the conductive thing okay i don't tend to slice them off and keep them i just tend to keep one or two of these and then i've always got some if i want them and here we have another pcb out of my scrapbook so what we're gonna do with this one well, first of all, you'll see there's lots of these capacitors on here. Generally speaking, I don't try to salvage these. I find they generally more hassle than they're worth to get off the board. I'll show you how to do it, but usually I don't bother. The best method I find if you do want to get these off in a usable condition is to add leaded solder to both pins, which as I mentioned is not always so easy often you have to use flux as well some heat okay you can see it doesn't want to easily do it okay and then basically just bring the soldering iron in 
and just use the ends of your finger, be a bit careful and just push the capacitor upwards, but often they're not that easy to do. You can see this one's proving tricky already. Maybe get something under the edge of it. Yeah, have the soldier down on 380, but these are just too much hassle to get off. So I'm not gonna bother with them. You could try warming the thing up with hot air, but you might just explode the capacitors. I mean, you can get these off with hot air. Personally, I would not recommend it though. What I might try to do is just to warm the board a little bit then desolder them. Again, just try to be sharp underneath. Okay, now you see it is desoldering. Yeah. It's off. It's in one piece. A bit warm. Okay, so if you want to bother to do that, you can do, but for me, it's just too much hassle. That's not to say there isn't some things I might want to get from here. These chips, we see lots of chips on here. These are normally very specialized things, so probably not the sort of thing I would bother with. I mean, they're not difficult to desolder with hot air. Again, bearing in mind, you may explode some of these capacitors. If we find something like an EEPROM, which I'm not sure that is, I may well try to get that. These little resistors I don't bother with. Pretty much the same with these resistor networks. I don't really tend to bother with them. That is probably a little book converter or something, but again, they can be quite hard to figure out what they are from the markings. So this board, I probably won't really bother with it, to be quite honest. Anything underneath I might want? Oh. Well, there's a couple of, uh, yeah, 7805 voltage regulator there. That may be another voltage regulator. Probably is. So I think I'll go for those. What are these chips? These look like they're dual op amps again, but I got a lot of these off that other board, so they're the same sort, so I don't think I'll bother. I'm a bit dubious about working too much on this for the sake of exploding capacitors, but I'll have a go at getting these regulators off. These are handy. So again, add some leaded solder. This won't help as much as you might think because the tab will be soldered underneath. But well, you won't do any harm. Okay. And let's see if we can get these off here without detonating anything. At least all the capacitors on the other side of the board. There are some just under where I want to heat this up, so it may make a mess or go bang. Let's see. Yeah, that's off. This one should also come quite easily. Okay. So I think I have really what's most interesting on that one. For me anyway. If you want to spend the time, yeah, get the capacitors off. 
Okay, so bin the rest of that one, I think. What else do we have? Oh, this is interesting. So, this looks like a microphone or a speaker. I think that's actually a microphone. I think this is off something like a old lighting controller, maybe DMX controller. So, this will have some interesting things on here to me. Okay, Atmel chip. I'm not sure if we can read that, but I'll have it anyway because it's in a socket. That one I think is some sort of I.O. chip, so I'll have that. Again, these are fairly generic here, yeah, LM358, so I'll have that. I won't bother with any of the small capacitors. Maybe the bigger one. There's a voltage regulator here, I think it is, so we'll have that. And we have some LEDs. And then this little switch could be quite handy if it works, so... Yeah, we can work it. We could have some fun and try and solder that just to see if we can do it. Okay, so the little microphone first. As you've seen before with these sort of things, it's just a matter of melting if you can both pins at the same time and just take it off the board. I'll take the large capacitor so it's easy to get to the things near to it because it came off so easily anyway. Same with this one, both pins at once, out it comes. That's a 7805, I always find voltage regulators useful, so we'll try and unsolder this. Now, I can probably do this just by grabbing hold of it, heating the three legs and pulling it out. If it gets too hot, I'll just loop something like the end of my tweezers or something through the hole, but let's have a loop, so. Just raise it off the bench a little bit. I've got a bit of space. Well, you see how easily that came out. So that was just done by hand. You see why I use this tip? Yeah. What else do we have? Some LEDs. Again, these are quite nice long legs on these. So they're worth having. This board is very easy to salvage, actually. I may even try to take some of these connectors off this one. Just try not to burn my fingers while I do this. And you see, it just came off, so... I find these sort of connectors very useful if I can get them off in one piece like that. Yeah. I'm doing it so fast, I don't even feel the heat. That one a little bit slower. Go again. It's off. Much the same with these small transistors. If you want to have them. And again, these have reasonably long legs on, so I probably will have a go. The same technique. So a little bit of solder. Okay. Just try to run this across all three pins. You see? Again, ready. That one's taking a little bit longer, out it comes. Just as it was getting hot, it came out. Things like these small diodes I probably won't bother with. These small resistors I won't bother with. But high wattage resistors, I will certainly take them if I find them. This thing, yep. Yeah. Why not? Give it to Detlef, see if it's any use to him. Okay. So that really leaves the crystal... If I can get at it, sometimes I will salvage these things. Sometimes I don't bother. Okay, let's see though. So I have my finger against it. If it comes easily, I'll take it. It's coming, so I'm going to have it. Yeah. Can you see that's lifting away from the board? Okay. There. And that just leaves these two ICs. Now, you could use desoldering gun, you could use braid. 
I'm going to go the other way at it, which is just to try to pull them out of the board. So I'll try and get something under the edge of it. Tweezers will just about go in there. Okay. You can see it there. I'll add solder to all the pins. Fresh leaded solder. See the tweezers fell back out, but I'm not too worried about that. Soon get them back in there again. Okay. Now, can we get this out? So just get something under the edge of it. Hit the whole lot and see if it'll come out. I felt it move. Yeah, look at that. Not quite out, but close. Get back in from this edge of it. Well, it fell out the board, actually. It didn't break any of the pins. So, you can see they're actually very easy to remove. Other one, maybe slightly more tricky. It has some components next to it. If we want to make life easy, we can always unsolder or just lift these components away okay make life a bit easy for ourselves I don't particularly want those resistors I just wanted to make a bit of space now I can get in the same way as I did with the other one down either side of the legs in this one yeah I've got a good position on that one to get some leverage Okay, I was in the wrong place for the moment. I had some solder. Don't worry about these big blobs. They'll just help. In actual fact, I'm under the edge of the chip. Let's see if we can get this one out. So again, how about that? Yeah. That's how to unsolder these sort of ICs. You can do this with the 14 and 16 pin. It's a little bit trick. The 8 pins are quite easy. Yeah. How about this? Well... Again, we could use the desoldering gun, and I might do actually, but let's just see what we can do with this. So, added leaded solder. Okay. Straight down there as well. Let's see if we can actually get this. So, I've got a hold of it. I'm seeing if I can actually get it to move. Yeah, the back end's moving. Go for the front end again. Can you see it's coming out? Okay. Get something under there. I'm a bit more concerned about burning my fingers and damaging the components. Okay. Yeah. Other edge. Okay. We can go to now we should get this out. There. Okay, I think you'll all agree that came out cleanly. Didn't melt anything, didn't damage anything. I have to straighten the legs a little bit and just clean the old solder off them, but that is pretty well done. So, if you like, live a bit dangerously, you can use that method. Like I didn't burn myself, by the way. Okay, so that's basically used. Nothing else I want on there. Let's go for something else. 